Hey everyone, Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com. Today, I want to give you the single greatest piece of advice that I can give. This is that one simple trick, that one thing that you can do that will double your online dating success, that will make you the center of attention at any single social gathering you go to, and that will ensure that amazing women are going to flock to you. And honestly, it's incredibly simple. You want to be this guy. At museums, he's allowed to touch the art. He is the most interesting man in the world. You want to be interesting. Now, this doesn't seem like that big of a deal. After all, we all know people who are about as dull as a box of rocks who seem to be at the center of attention anyway. Isn't that right, Gary? But being interesting is actually a critical part of building attraction. Like I said in my episode about charisma, we prioritize relationships we have with people who make us feel good in their presence. This means that interesting people are highly desired socially. Interesting people are more charismatic. Interesting people are more memorable. They're more fun to talk to. People want to spend more time with people who are interesting. And frankly, most folks aren't interesting. Let's be real, a lot of people are about as exciting as dry toast, which is why we love interesting people. Unlike the majority of other people out there, interesting folks have drive, they have purpose, they have passion. They do the things that other people wish they did and know the things that other people would love to know. Of course, this makes it sound like being interesting is all about being the coolest dude in the room. Of course, this makes it sound like being interesting is all about being the best at something or having the coolest stories or experiences, which is a mistake. People tend to vastly overestimate what it takes to be interesting. They think that being interesting is all about the extremes. So if you're not a bear punching astronaut who plays poker with supermodels and races vintage Italian sports cars, then you ain't shit, buddy. But that's not the case. You don't need to be the most interesting man in the world. Really, you just want to be the most interesting man in the room. And the first step to that is very simple. You want to live a life that's worth talking about. Let's be real here. Most people are pretty lazy. We do the same things day in, day out. Get up, go to work, come home, watch some TV, pass out, wake up the next day, repeat. Interesting people lead interesting lives, and they do the things that other people don't. So, hey, what did you do this weekend? Binge watch that popular show on Netflix? Hey, guess what? So did everybody else you know. On the other hand, someone who spent the weekend taking a class on how to make sushi rolls? That's different. That is something that a lot of people are going to want to know more about. Somebody else took a course on parkour or spent the weekend teaching blind people how to walk with a cane. Somebody else went on a local ghost tour. Somebody else went to a, a seminar on marketing on YouTube. It doesn't take much to be interesting. You just have to be willing to break out of your routine and do something that's out of the ordinary for you. Take a chance. Maybe you'll roll the dice and go see a band play that you've never heard before. Maybe you'll take a class at the gym. Maybe you'll take up boxing because you've always been curious. Maybe you'll find out that there is a HEMA group in your area and you'll decide to learn how to fight with long swords because why the hell not? One of the easiest ways to become more interesting is to simply indulge your curiosities, pick up random skills and learn new things, whether it has any practical purpose to your life or not. Hey, why not learn how to pick locks? Why not learn how to throw cards like Ricky J just because you thought it might be cool? If you're not sure what to do or where to start, then simply follow your curiosity and say yes to whatever opportunities come up. Get on meetup.com, browse Eventbrite, get a copy of your local alternative weekly paper and just see what's going on in your area this week. And then if anything even slightly tickles your fancy, give it a shot. Why not take that behind the scenes tour of the zoo? Why not go take that class on cooking French cuisine or attending that whiskey tasting at your local liquor store? If you're even vaguely interested, give it a try. If there's not some reason why you can't, not won't, 
can't, whether it's you're allergic to elephants or you're due in for surgery that day, then say yes and see what happens. Even if it's not your newest and greatest passion, you'll still benefit from it. You will be talking with people who you would otherwise never encounter. You'll expose yourself to new experiences and collect new stories. In fact, most interesting people live by the mantra of always err on the side of adventure. All of my best stories and experiences come from the times when I overrode that part of me that thinks that roughing it means the Wi-Fi is slow and doing something unusual. Indoor skydiving? Hell yeah! Exploring a ruined temple in the jungles of Cambodia? I got my passport, let's go check this out. Going to a swing dance being thrown by World War II veterans? Not only am I down for this, let's take this another step further and dress up like we're in Swing Kids. Go to an S&M party at the local dungeon? Even if I end up bored out of my skull, I went to an S&M party and I was bored. That is a story in and of itself. You want to ask yourself, does this seem like it would lead to a story that I could tell later? If yes, then you want to give it a try. Will this force you to get out of your comfort zone? Then you definitely want to give it a try. The more that you're willing to take a risk and try something new, the more interesting you'll be. And yeah, not everything is going to be this amazing, life-affirming, eat, pray, love kind of experience. Some things are going to be a little bit weird. Some things are going to be a little bit uncomfortable. But the fact that you tried something new and things didn't go great makes you more interesting. My worst dates, for example, all gave me great stories. Yeah, I'm never going to see this person again. The date was awful. But now I've got a story about how she and I were running around downtown trying to track down her coke dealer. Yeah, the date was awful. I'm never going to see this person again. But now I've got a story about how I was downtown with my date running all over the place trying to track down her coke dealer. True story. Did you do something? Did you do something that blew up in your face metaphorically or literally? Then congratulations you're now more interesting than a lot of the people you know. Not only because you've had this experience of it going badly, but because you did something new. This is an experience a lot of people simply aren't going to have. Once you've committed to adventure and are open to possibility, then you can find fascinating experiences anywhere, even in your hometown. It's easy to think that everything is dull and boring when you're stuck in the same rut. But looking around, being an active observer and participant in your life means that you can find experiences and stories and adventure anywhere, even in the most mundane of places. Whether it is witnessing an exorcism in the Barnes & Noble, or that time you were at your coffee shop and some dude walked in wearing a broadsword. But hey, these are all pretty big lifestyle changes. And you got a party coming up this weekend. What can you do right here, right now to be more interesting and be the life of the party? Easy. You really want to engage and cultivate your intellectual curiosity. Most people never deviate from the mainstream. They watch the blockbuster movies. They listen to the most popular music. They play the most popular games. Want to be more interesting than them? Then pay attention. Find the new, the fascinating, the unusual. Interesting people have information that other people don't, and they know how to share it in engaging ways. So, fall in love with learning things, not just cramming your head full of fun facts right before the party, but simply learning things because you're curious and you want to know more. For example, don't just passively absorb the news. Do a deeper dive. Find out more about it. Hey. Prince Harry got engaged to an American actress. The last time this happened, it was 1937, and King Edward abdicated the throne in order to marry a divorced American heiress. You know, the whole thing that led up to the King's speech. But don't think this was a romance novel come to life, because turns out Eddie's kind of a Nazi and was hoping that Hitler was going to give him backsies on the whole giving up the throne thing. So, read books on your local history. Watch documentaries on Netflix and Hulu. Go see a movie that you would never watch otherwise. Binge on back episodes of Planet Money and Radiolab. Go watch Scam School or Modern Rogue. But remember, being interesting is about more than just knowing stuff. It's about connecting with people, sharing with them, engaging with them. You're not just rattling off random trivia. This gets kind of boring really quickly. You want to anchor this knowledge, make it relevant to the audience. They may not necessarily dig the things that you do, but that doesn't mean it can't be interesting. They may not share your love of, say, the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, 
but everybody can understand the emotional connection behind it. Find that common ground, the reason why you love something, and that can make anything interesting. Let's say that you spent your weekend going to a post-apocalyptic zombie LARP. That is not going to be something a lot of people are going to dig. But that sense of adventure, that contest of wit and skill, that feeling of trying to survive a horror movie scenario, those are all things that people can really grip onto, and that makes it interesting. But here's another thing that a lot of people get wrong about being interesting. It's not about being the center of attention and bowling people over with how cool you are. In reality, interesting people don't do all the talking. In fact, they tend to follow the rule that interested is interesting. After all, anybody can sit there and just low-key rattle off all the cool things they've done or all the cool people they know, and quite frankly, it's kind of annoying. Name dropping's not cool. Bobby De Niro taught me that. Interesting people show interest in others. They know that other people have stories and they want to hear them. This is why they don't ask the boring surface questions. They want to know things about the other person. What do they think? How do they feel? What is the craziest thing they've ever done? What is the most bizarre thing they've ever put into their mouth? What are they passionate about? You don't want to try to outcool the other person. In fact, you actually want to find people who are more interesting than you. Those are people that you want to cultivate in your life. After all, interesting people tend to know other interesting people, and that makes them more interesting. Don't settle for the standard. Take your first date out to raise go-karts. Go learn how to scam free drinks from strangers at bars. Find your stories. Find your experiences. The more you err on the side of adventure, the more you experience the more interesting you become. And that makes you more desirable. Stay interesting, my friends. Hey, thanks for checking out the latest video. You've heard some of the stuff that I've done, so now I wanna know about you. What are some of the cool or interesting things that you've done? Tell me your stories in the comments below. If you have a short dating question or a topic you'd like to hear more about, hit me up. Either share your question in the comments or write to me at doc at drnerdlove.com with for YouTube in the subject header. And hey, I've got books about dating, about relationships, about how to be a more attractive, desirable man. Check them out. Links to buy them are in the show notes below. And if you do, do me a huge solid and leave a review for them on Amazon and Goodreads. It's a huge help. If you've been enjoying the episode, smash that thumbs up button. Let me know. If you've really been digging the channel, if you feel like these videos have been really helping you and you've been getting a lot out of them, then consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even $1 a month is a huge help. And as always, Follow me on Twitter at, at @drnerdlove. Join the Facebook page at facebook.com/drnerdlove. Smash that logo to subscribe. Check out my other videos, and I will be back with you next week with more tips about love, sex, and dating. Later.